Egg Scoop, our weekly show here at Performance Bicycle, where we talk about all the latest and greatest things that are happening in our lives and uh, pretty much whatever we're interested in. Um, this week it's freezing cold outside. This is John, by the way. He's from our product team. He's our trainers uh, buyer. Yeah. And, and we're talking about trainers because it's the, it's the topic, it's relevant, and uh, you were just riding one earlier today during your lunch break, right? A absolutely. It's the season for it. And, you know, I'm a cyclist. I love to be outdoors. And, 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 but, you know, when conditions get... Every now and then you every just now and then. take oh, rule oh, number five and throw yeah, it out the door. And throw it out the door <laughs> and, and get on your trainer. But, yeah. but, 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 Zach, even with the move towards interactive trainers, which, which we'll get to in a minute, you know, it, it used to be that I would only go ride a trainer indoors because it was cold. Uh, but now there's other reasons to go take your training yeah, indoors because of the smart trainers because and of the smart trainers, trainers and what they can do and what they can do for yeah. your training and fitness. So, so there's there's reasons to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to dive into all these different trainers uh, again. If this is your first time joining us, this happens every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Um, like us on Facebook if you haven't already, and head over to Instagram and like us at Performance Bike on Instagram. Um, this week again, it's cold here in North Carolina. It's 15, 20 degrees outside right now. Yep. Uh, so we're talking all about trainers. We did put a blog article up earlier this week as well. Um, so head to blog.performancebike.com to read a little bit more in depth for the reading folks on the trainers. Um, and then we also put up a really cool um, blog yesterday about nutrition uh, inside um, while you're riding on the trainer. And that was from Dr. Portman from Pacific Health Labs. They do Accelerate. Um, and they do Endurox and all that good it, stuff. It's so. something we all kind of forget about. Yeah. And you can be you can be an hour, an hour and a half on a trainer, and you, you you've lost a lot of electrolytes. You've lost you know you've, you've you sweat a you, ton. You, you look at the floor. Ton, yeah. And very often we're not thinking about nutrition while we're indoors, but it's it's yeah. great that we do that. And we, so we think, think plenty of it. content out there on the blog, so check that yeah. out. So yeah, let's sure. dive in the trainers. Though. That's sure. what we're here to talk about today. Um, so we have in front of us and behind us here, we have basic trainers over here. Yep. Um, and we have a smart trainer here. Right. And then interactive it's trainers, which correct. are smart trainers and interactive trainers are both smart in the fact that they're electronic and they talk to apps and stuff yep. like that. But there's differences between yeah. a smart trainer and interactive yep. trainer. So, so let's walk through them, kind of the differences you get with each trainer and what they do. Let's start with the basics. Okay. Um, so, so kind of at, at its most basic, and I actually affectionately call these dumb trainers. They're not dumb, but they're not smart. So, right. so in my <laughs> world, the opposite of smart? In, in my world, they're the opposite of smart trainer. So it's a basic trainer. And what it does is it just gives you resistance. It's resistance you set yourself via uh, shifting gear on the bike. A few models actually will have a cable actuator that have two or three levels of resistance you can change. But really, it's just between you and your bike. Um, they're great for somebody who just is, is interested in fitness. It's, it's, we've all put a few pounds on over the holiday period, and it's like if, if you just want to kind of lose a few pounds, get into shape. Or it's just a, it's a great training tool, and they, they're very affordable. They kind of start at prices from something like about 150 bucks to about $300. And we've got a few of them here. This is one that's a performance exclusive one. This one here we, it, we, we make in-house ourselves. Uh, it's, it's a top seller for us. Great little trainer, you know, over here from, from Cyclops, you, you know, something that costs about 200 bucks. It, it does much the same um, as this one here. And then you kind of move up the line to, to this guy here. Um, it, it costs in the $300 range, 300, 320 bucks, something like that. But what this one does is it just, it's got a, a larger resistance unit here. It, it can handle more power output from you and your legs. So the resistance is, is a little bit more so than on the, the more entry level price points. Gotcha. So basically, 150 bucks to 300 dollars. Yep. You're paying for ease of use. Yep. Um, what else? Any other yep. characteristics? No, they're de they're dead easy to use. There's there's very few mechanics associated with them. They're they're all what we call wheel in designs. In that you just you just like pop your 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 bike in here and go. Um, and for the most part, resistance is set through the pedaling motion and you shifting gears to, to change resistance. Yep. yep. These all these ones here all are what we call fluid units. So there's a fluid in here in the resistance unit, and, and effectively there's a there's a paddle in there, and as it moves through the fluid, it creates yeah. resistance. Simple I think another that. benefit of spending a little bit more money is sometimes the closure mechanisms are yep. a little bit easier. So this one you have to spin, and yep. some of the other ones you just kind of set it, you throw just, a lever. It's just a simple crank, makes it a little and, faster, and, and it's done. And all of these ones as well, they're fairly small and compact. You don't if you're you know if you're living in an apartment or you just don't have a lot of space, you know just fold that thing up. It'll literally slide under a bed gotcha. if, you, if you need to get it out of the out of the way. 
Um, yeah. And then one other important thing to mention is if you're, you know, these are great for setting up, riding a bike and say, oh, I want to ride for 45 minutes and maybe you're going based on perceived heart rate and perceived exertion and yep. all that stuff. But if you want to track your data on a basic trainer, you're going to need a speed and cadence sensor right. uh, and a heart rate monitor that ties into maybe um, your smart computer yep. or something like yep. that on or, the front. Or, 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 an, or an app on your, on your smartphone or something like that. Yep. And of course, the speed cadence sensor is something that would attach onto the bike. So yep. it would go exactly. under, on the, and, and you know, there's a few of them out there. You need to get one that would, that would um, attach onto the rear seat stay of the bike so it'll pick up speed. Gotcha. Um, some of them go on the front wheel, but you'd need one to go on the rear wheels there. And that, that's going to be the biggest difference, I think, between the basic trainers and then the smart Moving trainers. Moving into the smart trainers. Right, so if we're going to talk about the difference between a basic and a smart yep. trainer, the smart trainer is going to record your data for you. Right? Yeah. So, so here, let's do this. Let's let me, let me, let me, let me okay. get this off the table. Okay. Let's put this I'll one put over this one here. here. So we're putting the basic trainer down there. We still have lots of other basic trainers yep. here. Yep. And this is a smart trainer. Yep. And we're going to so, talk about the interactive trainer in a minute. Here, but there is a difference here between the so, smart one and the interactive. Yep, and one. you know what? I, sometimes I'll go online, and different companies, different folks, different blogs will refer to smart and interactive. They kind of interchange the words. I, I have a very clear definition myself in terms of what's what. So for me and for us here at Performance, yep. when we say um, smart and we say interactive, let me explain the two. When we call something a smart trainer, it's going to communicate one way with some of your third-party apps like, like Zwift. Yep. Um, when we talk interactive, it's going to communicate both ways. Right. So when I say communicate one way, this, this trainer here, it's got, the same, it's got the same spindle on the back like these, these dumb ones have. <laughs> it's, it's, it's also got a, an oil-filled resistance unit, but it's got this speed cadence sensor here on the back, which is transmitting, yep, transmitting data, and that's transmitting data one way. And it's also going to record power. It's, it differs from a fully interactive trainer in that the power recording, it's calculated power. So the manufacturers, when they build these, they know exactly how much resistance it takes to the pedaling right. force to move, to move this spindle, right? So they're able to calculate the power. And it's pretty accurate, but it's not as accurate as, as the interactive. interactive. It's probably, uh, uh, someone's going to kill me for, for making the statement that <laughs> it's probably in the 5 6% range. But there's gotcha. a range there. That, that it, but the good thing is it's repeatable. So right. it, it may not be as accurate as a, as a fully interactive trainer, but it's a repeatable because number. Because you're doing the same thing on the same device right. over time. Yep. Right. And so, so you're still going to be able to measure if you're riding harder, yep. stronger one That's day right. or another. That's right. right. And, these, and these are a, a slightly uh, more expensive trainer than the basics in terms that, you know, we started out at about 150 bucks for a most basic trainer. These start at maybe around 225, 250, okay. and go up to about the 350 mark, depending okay. on what brand you buy. Gotcha, so for those of you out there who are wondering, how do I track my data, how do I get into Zwift, the basic, you're gonna need a speed cadence sensor. Correct. The smart is all you need to get into the game, yep. play the game, um, track your data. Yep. Um, but the really cool kind of functions of Zwift and, and other programs out there, um, is when you move into the interactive trainer, this part about you know, the, the dumb trainers are only sending data one way. The interactive trainers, yep. you're getting data sent back from, let's just say Zwift. Yep. And so if you're climbing up a virtual hill in Zwift, this actually gets harder. That's exactly right. If you're going up a 6% grade on the, in the virtual world, it's going to feel just like going up that 6% grade if you're out in the road. Yeah. Um, it gives, and, and similarly, when you, when you go to when go, you go down, it gets a lot easier. A, you know, on the, this intera particular interactive trainer, it's got about a 45 pound flywheel right there. So when you go over the top of that hill and start going down the other side, you, you feel like that same inertia yeah. that when you're out on the road on a bike. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's really, it's really cool. Right. And I've ridden yep. both styles in Zwift. And you know, when I went from basic with a speed to cadence sensor, to a smart trainer, it definitely made it more fun sure. and more enjoyable. But when I went to this, I mean, it was a total game changer. Yeah. And that's what I think it made it for me feel real. Yeah. You know, like when I was on a smart trainer without the resistance coming back, I still felt like I was just sitting in my living room riding a trainer, yeah. which was fine. It was more fun and engaging. Yep. But as far as like the workout and the realism and the intensity, intensity. of the workout, this was a total game changer for me. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, so let's, let's talk interactive um, yeah. for a minute. And into maybe, interactive here. And maybe we'll pop that other one over there so we have two interactives and we take a look at those. Okay. Sorry. There. That's okay. Okay, so this is a, so now we have both interactives. and One of them is a wheel on and one of them is a direct drive. You can kind of see the, the difference. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, 
We were talking about interactive, and I think one other cool feature, we talked about like the elevation change and the resistance, but there's also a really cool feature called um, the ERG mode. Yes, ERG right? mode. Yep. ERG mode, yep. yep. Explain that to us, and, and I'll let you explain sure. it, because my, my few experiences are like sure. almost miserable. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I had a really miserable <laughs> lunchtime today, yeah. today, so I'll get to that in a minute, but, but yeah, so, so, so in, in just in talking about these interactive trainers in general, and I'm about to say again what you just said, but they, it's two-way communication. So, so you are sending data, and, and it's sending information on your power output, your speed, your cadence, if you're wearing a heart rate uh, strap also, or a heart rate monitor, it's sending that information. But then the, the game or the virtual world that you're in is feeding information back to you. So if there's a grade, you can participate, you know, it'll, it'll feed back what that grade is, uphill, yeah. downhill. Um, you can draft behind somebody and feel that, hey, I'm getting a little bit of a draft right. here. It just got a little bit easier. You can race. You can be in your house, I can be in mine, you know, someone else can be in, in across the other yeah. side of the world, and we're racing together in real time a, on the same course. So it's really it's a really pretty cool. incredible experience. Yeah. Um, so, so it's just, you know, it, it just, I think, brings training to a whole new Absolutely. world. And it takes the monotony that we kind of, we all feel on tri those traditional trainers. It's just like, oh, I gotta get in the trainer, but it's cold outside. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of like, hey, I can get a great workout in yeah. today, it's structured and, and it's going to help my fitness. So when I hit the spring, I'm in the shape I want. And I beat Zach up the hill. And I beat the Zach. Group ride and, today. I, and I got some bragging rides. <laughs> and, and, and I'm going to and I'm going to upload all my data to Strava yeah. afterwards. So and it all, counts as a ride on Strava too. It, it counts towards rides. your mileage for totally. the year, which I thought was really cool. Totally. So so that's kind of the general gist of interactive trainers. But to circle back to this erg mode, um, the all of the inter in interactive trainers also have what's called an er ergonomic mode or erg mm -hmm. mode. And what's happening there is that rather than when I pedal on that trainer and I generate watts with my legs that translates into power and moves that trainer, I'm the one doing it. There's times when I want the trainer to serve a certain power output to me, a certain number of watts to me. For example, if I'm doing a workout right. and, and I'm doing intervals. Right. And so super important with interval training. Super right? important with yeah. interval training, right? So, so, so and I, let me give you an example, and I think it frames this you know, as, as best. So if, if I've got a, a functional tre threshold power, an FTP right. um, of 200, 250, and so if I'm, on, if I'm on Zwift or another interactive um, uh, platform and they say, hey, we're going to do an interval workout for you today, your FTP is 250 watts, so we're going to have these, you're going to do these three intervals and you're going to be at 90% power, so you need to be at 225 watts. Now the trainer's doing this whole thing for you. It means that no matter when we hit those intervals, no matter what my cadence you is, cheat. you can't cheat. <laughs> it's going to be 250 watts. Because it sets it to 250, it right? It sets it to 250. So I can be do, doing 60 RPM uh, with my pedal cadence, or I can be doing 90 or 100 or 110. It's like 60 I am still, versus 90. Right. Yeah. So really what it does is it makes it real. And it takes, yeah. the, it takes the thought process away from me that's saying, oh, oh, i got to hit 250 watts, 250. It's just there. It's just right? I've got to turn the pedals. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got to do. It's a weird experience the first time you do it. It really is. What, the first time I did it, I think I had a pretty high cadence, and I was going, and it, and it kicked in. And I was like, oh, man, this is hard. So yeah. I kind of you know, instinctively backed off a little yeah. bit. When it just, it just got harder. And honestly, to the point where I like, couldn't pedal anymore. Well, that, that's what happened to me at lunchtime today. I was doing yeah. the interval workout at lunchtime today, and it called for three 10-second intervals, and I was supposed to put out 710 watts. Now, I can't put out 710 watts. At least I sure heck can't sustain 710 right. watts. So, so 710 watts. So I, the first one went fine. The second one, I needed to shift down because I needed a higher cadence. I couldn't stay on top of that gear. Yeah. I was like, ah. So I tried to shift. I dropped my chain. So, uh, so I stopped, stopped the bike for a second. I couldn't pop, pop the chain back on. I get the chain back on. I could not. I'm at 710 <laughs> watts in erg mode. I could not couldn't turn get the pedals. It, they just wouldn't go down. Yeah. I just couldn't do it. I had to wait for that t time segment to elapse. And once it got me into the you recovery mode, again. it dropped down to 140 yeah. watts, and off I went. But uh, it was funny. I was like... This but you got happening. some of them. You got like half of them yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it so. gives you something to work towards and, and to continue yeah. to strive for, right? Yeah. And, and it's a great workout. And, yeah. and it just 
gives you a workout you can't get. And you can set them, you can choose like yeah. like easier intervals, right? Correct. To, Absol <laughs> you can Absolutely. actually accomplish them. Of course you but can. But it's, it's can. really cool. So like ERG yep. mode with interval training is like a, a whole new thing. If you haven't done it yep. and you're an expert right. in everything else, like try that out yep. because that's a whole new yep. awesome thing. Oh, there's a few there. things. You've, if you're in that virtual world, there's a few have-tos. I think you have to do a race as well. Yeah. And last year I did my first, I've been riding virtual train or um, interactive trainers for about three years now, kind of since they, they first came out yeah. and last year I started doing races and, and they are just and, and it's not brutal. just it's not well <laughs> brutal but there's also some of the riders there's group there. rides and, yeah. and, and you pick the one with the, the with the level that suits your power output. Yeah. So so you so so you know I'm not an A rider so I'm not with those fast guys. I'm but I, I picked the group that best meets yeah. my needs and uh, or my fun. output, what I can yeah. do and it is great fun. It's a great workout but it's fun and social. Um, you can text with each other you if you have the app, and you can give people the kudos. And yeah, all that good absolutely. Stuff. It's great fun. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Um, so we've totally gone from basic to smart trainers, now to interactive trainers. Mm -hmm. And um, again, these are both interactive trainers here. We have one from Wahoo, one from Cyclops. And, but if you look at them, they are noticeably different. Sure. So we talked about it earlier, but one of them has a wheel on, and one of them is a direct drive. Yep. So let's talk about the differences. Um, direct drives are going to be a little bit pricier. Yep. Uh, most of the time. Yep. Um, but there's some some pros and cons to both of them. So sure. why don't you run us through like your sure. thoughts on sure. wheel on versus direct drive? That's, that, that's right. And there's multiple schools of thought here. And it, it it isn't that one is significantly better than the other. It doesn't make one a bad trainer if it's a, if it's one or the other. Yeah. So just let me talk through a little bit of some of the features on it. So the wheel on it's this, it's it's basically you, you know the rear the rear of the bike gets clamped in here and the rear wheel of the bike sits on the spindle and turns it. Right. Yeah. It's super easy. Easy to set you up. Just spin that to yeah, it to up just to tighten the, the torsion against it and, and make it work. Super simple to set up. Don't have to remove your rear wheel. Don't and, and you just set it up and you go. So it's really quick yeah. and it's really easy. And um, if you were to look for a downside, if there is a downside, if you were to look for the downside, it's it's a little bit noisier because you've got your right. con the contact of your wheel on the, the kids are sleeping in the next room so, or something so, like that. It, You're trying to it's, squeeze it's that. It's not terrible, in. but it's yeah. definitely a little bit noisier. And also there's um, there's a little bit more there's some wear and tear on that rear tire. So, right. so I, if I you're hours that and hours um, in, in the trainer, you, you're going to notice that you're going to, you're, you know. Yeah, eventually, that rear wheel is going to get squared yep. off. The tire, I'm sorry, the rear yep. rear tire is going to get squared it's off. Squared off. And I, so I have seen other people buy, you know, the wheel on and then an extra rear, rear wheel. wheel. That's right. Um, with the trainer tire, and they, they swap back and, and forth. And they make trainer tires now, and the trainer tires are specific. They're made with a with a with a with a harder compound rubber. Right. So it doesn't which, wear out as fast. It doesn't wear out as fast. So yeah. it's not designed for handling. It's designed for wear. So right. It's, but if you're in that train of thought where you're going to buy an extra wheel, rear mm -hmm. wheel, and put a tire and a tube on it, yeah. Like you might as well just spend that money and, and buy a, the a direct, direct drive. drive. Right. And so with the direct drive, and 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 the rear wheel of the bike comes off. And so then you're you're clamping. Just mounts right yep, on. Yep, yep. The bike right on here, chain going straight onto the, your cassette, um, and so it takes a, just a little a little bit longer to set up, but mo moments longer really. Um, you have to be comfortable popping that rear wheel out of your bike. Um, but but there's a few. To my mind, there's a few advantages. Okay. Um, I think you you feel more connected to the trainer. It's like you're in an, it's one. Sounds much of a lag, really, right? Right. It, you know, it's a, it's a, you're in, it's an integral kind of part. You're like connected to that trainer. Yeah. You just feel more secure in there. Um, and the other part of it um, that that is real is that there is a very very slight time lag mm -hmm. with the with the wheel in designs versus the direct drives in terms of the power recording to whatever platform you're right. using. And that's like maybe second to 1.5 seconds so when you crank on those pedals it there's a t tiny little time lag on the on the the um the wheel in designs yeah doesn't seem like much isn't much if you if you never rode a direct drive you'd probably be really happy yeah, with the wheel it. in i've ridden there's seven trainers here i've ridden them all so i'm kind of familiar with them all yeah. I've, I've, I've spent time on every single one of these and um, so there's that little bit of a time lag where you notice it is if you're if you're if you're in a uh, one of the if you're on Zwift and you're in a race or and a you group ride or a group ride um, you know and the group jumps and and starts to move you know I, I, you it's just like a second or so yeah, suddenly suddenly like that little you can be just riding and you think you're at that same pace and there's a tiny gap opened up you know you're riding harder and then you kind of then you're kind of yo-yoing off you, then you have, yeah. kind of have to get on it to get back on now the flip side of it is that when that group takes their foot off the gas, you get, you get, a, little you get a second yeah. or a second yeah. and a half of extra. And it doesn't seem like much, and the truth is, it isn't much. 
it's not a giant seismic right. thing like, oh, these are so much better. But it's, it's the nuance. And it's the nuance between, you know, the Chevy and a BMW. All these cars right. are going to get Jeep, you. Chevy and a shiny new BMW. All these, yeah. all, the, uh, the, all these cars are going to get you from point yeah. A to point B. But I so, guess you could say, in theory, it, it, you could win or lose the sprint on a Zwift race. Yeah. Uh, wheel on versus... Yeah. Drift yeah. drive, right? Yeah. The direct could. drive could, could get you there, in you theory. Could. You could. And in now theory. you're going to spend a little bit more for the, for the direct drive. Right. They're more in that sort of 800 to 1000 or even up to $1,500, $1,600. Yeah. So that's a, it's a pricier option. Um, okay. you know, and, 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 but by, by, by and large, I don't think you're going to be unhappy with any, there, any interactive training you choose. One question that we had gotten at one point was, um, you know, the power differences. You yep. know, we talked about this one feels a little bit... Uh, more real than this one at times, just because of the lag. Yep. Um, but as far as like, just say you're riding and training with some type of power um, device out on the real world, yep. on the road. Yep. Um, say it's like some some pedals or sure. uh, Cyclops rear wheel, like whatever. Or whatever. It is. Yep. Um, if you take those numbers and then train on one of these, is the the direct drive going to be a little bit more accurate than the the wheel on, or is it kind of a wash at the it, end of the day? Kind of a wash. There's maybe a slight little bit of an accuracy benefit, I think, with the direct drives. Um, there's certainly, from the from a sense of real world feel, you're going to get a benefit from the direct drive because because most of them here have 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 a flywheel, uh -huh. um, and that kind of creates moment, uh, momentum. There, there's a there's a smaller flywheel on this one, but you're you know I think it's about 45 pounds here, and yeah. I'm not sure what this one is, but it's it's a couple of pounds. So you have a much more real world feel. Um, all the manufacturers will make a, a claim that they're kind of 2%, 3%, 2.5% right. power accurate. My experience is, yeah, that's, that's about that's it, about you know, and, and, and they're all close. And I've ridden interactive trainers with, a, with, with a, another power source, like a pedal-based power meter Tied or, a, or, or, a, or a, um, a, a hub-based. And, and it's close. It's so close that I don't, I don't think there's any real major benefit one over the yes. other. They're cool. all they're all very accurate, and they're doing a great job. The manufacturers of these things are doing a great job. Awesome, awesome. And I think um, so. Like one of the last questions we had earlier this week was on maintenance. Yep. Um, so you know, is there annual maintenance on these things? No. No. There Not really, really isn't. There really isn't. You're going to sweat a lot. So yeah. so wipe the thing down every every day or two, or yeah. every couple of times you use it because it's just cruddy and nasty. So so yeah. just just wipe it down, clean it off. Um, on the on the tradition, these traditional, these basic trainers, you know, there's just zero maintenance. I, you know, you know, I, 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 I roll, actually rode this model here for about 10 years. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I've, I've yeah, got I think, one, my first one, I think, right, still Half the world shed. has one somewhere yeah. at home in the garage. I rode one of those Nothing for about 10 years, that. and I never, I never did anything to and it. And then the interactive ones have only been out for three or four years, yep. and, and so far no problems. And I've been so. riding one for three or four Ever years, same then. one, and no maintenance on it. The only thing you need to do with the interactive is that um, you want to calibrate them. It's a, it's a straightforward process through yep. the app that comes with the, with the trainer. And every now and, and then there's a firmware update or a software yep. update, so yep. it interacts with, uh, yep. with it'll whatever platform you, it'll tell you. And, and I've found that the different platforms I've used, or the, the setup of the trainers is really, really easy. Um, you know, you, you just log in, you log into Zwift, and it'll pop right up there, and it'll go, ah, you've got yeah. a, you know, a Wahoo, a, a, it whatever is. it is, yeah. A, yeah, and, and off you go. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, John, thanks a lot for joining us oh, today. It's been a pleasure. Really appreciate it. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is the Performance Bike Scoop. Again, it happens every Wednesday at 3 p.m. It's cold outside. It's cold outside. It's uh, the first week of January, so we're talking about trainers today. We covered basic trainers. We covered uh, smart trainers and then interactive trainers and all the differences. Uh, we also did a video about a month and a half ago, John, John and I did, on like all of the details of Zwift yep. and getting set up with your, your phones or your computers. So if you're looking for more information on that, go to our video section. You can scroll down and see that video. Um, again, hey, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you again next week at 3 p.m. All right, cheers. Cheers.